All right, now the next thing you mentioned was Europa, mm. okay, getting further out in the solar system. You know, if, if I could figure out how to do a mission to answer the questions on this world, I wouldn't be screwing around with rovers on Mars. To me, this is the most fascinating place in the solar system besides Earth. It's a moon of Jupiter. It has a crust of ice, but there's strong evidence, no smoking gun yet, but really powerful evidence that beneath that crust of ice lies an ocean of liquid water. We can go to the next picture. It actually shows a, a, a close-up of what the crust of Europa looks like, and it looks just startlingly like what you see when you look at sea ice on the Earth. It's not hard to believe that there's water underneath that. And there's a lot of good evidence to, to suggest it as well. The thing that's interesting about that, and we're going to hear more about this later, there are places on the Earth's seafloor where geothermal activity, volcanic activity from the Earth's seafloor provides energy that organisms can use to drive their metabolisms and form the base of this incredible local food chain that you find at high, deep sea hydrothermal vents uh, on, on, on Earth. So it's entirely possible that if there's an ocean of liquid water on Europa, as we believe there is, there could be life that derives its metabolic energy from the internal geo geophysical heat from inside of Europa. So I think it's a fascinating place to try to to go and do a mission, but you know, I know how to do Mars rovers. I don't know how to do submarines on Europa. That's a tough one. Is it the geothermal activity that keeps it liquid so far out? Yeah, it sun? is. It is. Essentially what happens, the, the mechanism that keeps Europa partially molten, it's heating by tidal deformation. What happens is Europa's in orbit around Jupiter. Because it's so close to Jupiter, this massive body, it's distorted. It's not spherical. It's got a big, kind of a big tidal bulge. But its orbit is not perfectly circular. It's elliptical. And so sometimes uh, Europa is a little closer to Jupiter, sometimes a little further away. And as it's closer, the tidal bulge is bigger. When it's further away, it's smaller. And so it's getting flexed back and forth. And if you, you can take like a, uh, like a piece of wire, like a coat hanger wire or something, bend it back and forth real fast and put your fingers on the mm -hmm. bend, it'll feel hot. That's what's happening. So if President Obama gave you an infinite number of dollars. Oh, that would be nice. How would you design? How, what sort of probe would you design for Europa? All right, the way you would want to do Europa, I'd want to do it in at least two steps. The first thing you want to do is send an orbiter with maybe a deep sounding radar that can look through the ice and find where the thin spots are. Because it's probably not uniform. Okay, and if I got to get through that ice, it's kilometers thick. I want to know where the thinnest spots are. That's the first mission. Second mission, you go for it. Second mission, you go to the surface, and then you would want to have some kind of probe that has a heat source, probably nuclear, in its nose that can melt its way down through what might be kilometers of ice. And then when it gets to the bottom, and it's deploying a data cable behind it, when it gets to the bottom, part of it swims away, a free swimming autonomous robotic <laughs> vehicle that can then swim through Europa's oceans, transmit data back and out, back to Earth. It's a really hard mission. <laughs> it's a really hard mission. 